Hello. Welcome to my guide on soloing ED2. Before we start explaining how to do ED2 in a solo encounter, it has to be mentioned that if you do ED2 in a group encounter, you're actually going to deal with a lot of the mechanics in the same way. The major difference is actually how much damage you would be taking and how long the run and the bosses will actually take. The only requirements that this dungeon actually has are tier 80 or better weapons, tier 70 or better armor, 99 in your combat stats, and 96 or better herb lore. You can definitely work with better gear and better levels than this, and that will only make your experience easier. Here's an example loadout that I used to solo ED2 with my lower level gear. I basically just used armadal armor with chaotic crossbows and ruby back criminal bolts as ammunition, and then I used overload, prayer potion, sardom, and bruise food, an adrenaline potion, and then also a ring of vigor. We have chinchampas to kill any large groups of mobs, and we have super anti-fires to protect ourselves against any dragons. Using better gear than this will ensure a smoother run through the dungeon, but you can also use less gear than this as well. However, if you use much less gear than this, you may actually have trouble getting through the dungeon altogether. Elite Dungeon 2 is also perfectly reasonable to do with other styles, although I do recommend using ranged the most. If you have much better gear in melee or magic in, than you do in ranged, then feel free to use that gear instead. The best way to get to Elite Dungeon 2 is to use the PVM hub portals and teleport directly to Elite Dungeon 2 this way. If you have any kills at all at Elite Dungeon 2, it doesn't have to be a solo encounter, it can be a group encounter, even if you actually died before your group finished the dungeon you still get to teleport using this portal. If you cannot use the Elite Dungeon 2 portal, you can also use an Elite Dungeon 1 or an Elite Dungeon 3 portal and teleport to just outside the respective Elite Dungeons and use the outside chest to teleport to Elite Dungeon 2. If you have a Reaper task for Elite Dungeon 2, you can use the Reaper portal. And finally, if you have no other way to teleport to Elite Dungeon 2, you can use the Ring of Kinship to teleport to Daemonheim, run east, eventually you get to actually Elite Dungeon 3, teleport outside using the chest, and you'll reach Elite Dungeon 2. Finally, you can also buy Elite Dungeon 2 teleports from just outside Elite Dungeon 2, but you'll have to get there first. We're going to start talking about how you actually do the dungeon. To enter the dungeon, I highly recommend using normal mode unless you are only here to do Curse of the Blackstone quest and nothing else. Then you can use story mode, which will be far easier. As soon as you get down, run to the left side of the arena and then run all the way into the right corner and then you will use your chinchampas to kill the mobs. After you kill the slimes, Drink your super anti-fire potion, and attack the red dragons. If there is a red dragon near the southwest corner of another red dragon, then you can actually throw chinchampas at the northern eastern dragon, and it will be able to do damage to the dragon next to it as well. Otherwise, just use your regular weapons and kill the dragons as quickly as you can. After you kill the red dragons, the wide barrier will drop and then you continue on and kill those red dragons as well. Again, if there is a red dragon near the southwest corner of another red dragon, you can use a chinchampa on the northeastern red dragon and kill both that red dragon and the red dragon near it. Otherwise, just use your normal weapons again. After the barrier drops, kill the magma golems with your chinchampas. After the barrier drops, immediately run to the southwest corner. Use your chinchampas to kill some of the laboratory slimes that are near the celestial dragon. After you kill those laboratory slimes, kill the celestial dragon and then run through the nearby barrier. Celestial dragons and bosses do not actually do dragonfire damage to your characters, so you will not need to drink 
your anti-fire or super anti-fire potion before fighting any celestial or dragon bosses. If you see an in-game message about the celestial dragon stopping time, then use a stun or binding ability as quickly as you can. Carry on through the barrier and kill the celestial dragons like you killed the red dragons earlier. However, if one of the celestial dragons starts healing, stun it or bind it as soon as you can. Once you've killed the three celestial dragons, move on and kill the celestial dragon closest to you. If that does not drop the next barrier, kill the next celestial dragon as well. Go through that barrier and do the same, and if the barrier does not open for the first boss, then kill the other celestial dragon. If you have a lot of mobs chasing you at this point, and you're worried that they will interfere with your boss fight, teleport out now and then return to the dungeon as soon as you can. Once you've returned to the dungeon, make sure you continue where you last left off. Enter the dungeon and then teleport using the chest to your very north. You want to choose the second option, which will bring you right next to the next boss fight. The first boss, Astalarn, will not attack you unless you attack first. So, if you need to, take your time before you attack the boss. Astarn will attack in primarily magic style, although he will also attack with range style once in a while by spinning around quickly, or once in a while attack with melee as well. To start, do as much damage as you can to the boss until you stop being able to do significant DPS. Once you stop being able to DPS normally, wait until the pulsar spawns and then kill the pulsar. Around the time you kill the Pulsar, or maybe a little bit after, you'll see a blue adrenaline bar above your head and a game message mentioning a wormhole. You want to stand towards the center lines as the blue adrenaline bar gets to its last quarter or eighth. Here I'm going to show roughly where the center lines would be on the arena. The adrenaline bar will eventually run out and will place a black hole on top of your character. Step out of the black hole and wait until a neutron star appears. Run so that the black hole is between the neutron star and you. The neutron star should not touch you because it will do 8000 damage to you and it will be a while before another neutron star happens. When the neutron star touches the black hole, the black hole becomes a white hole. Standing in the white hole will not result in you taking typeless damage. However, you do get to return to regular DPS as soon as you're in the white hole, so step in it as quickly as you can. The white hole will last for roughly 30 to 45 seconds, and then it will despawn. After it despawns, you'll get another adrenaline bar above your head, signaling another wormhole, and you're going to want to place it again on a center line, lower a neutron star into it when that spawns, and then continue to damage Astalarn. You may also need to kill the Pulsar as well if Astalarn still has a lot of health left. If you have a lot of DPS, you should be able to get Astalarn down eventually using just one white hole. However, it is perfectly reasonable to take more than one white hole. In the kill you see right now, this actually took me three white holes to kill the boss eventually. Once Astalarn dies, run through the newly opened barrier, kill the celestial dragons, and then as soon as the southern barrier opens, run through it down the stairs and just past the broken down wall. Run to the east until you get past the wall, and then use your chinchampas to kill the two lava strike worms next to each other, attacking the left lava strike worm. Once you kill the lava strike worms, then run through the barrier, run to the east again, until you can run to the south and then kill all of the black dragons using chinchampas if possible. Make sure you drink your anti-fire potion before you fight these black dragons. Their dragon fire is very, very strong. Continue through the barrier once you've killed the four black dragons there and kill the next black dragons as well. After you've killed those black dragons, continue through the barrier again, 
and then skip the first two lava strike worms, but then kill all four lava strike worms after that. The first two lava strike worms will prevent any spiders that are chasing you at this moment from continuing on through the dungeon. Then kill the black dragons once the barrier drops. And then after the four black dragons, the barrier drops and you're going to be able to fight the second boss. Go over the bridge nearby and you'll be into the arena for the second boss, Verak Lith. Verak Lith attacks with magic attacks if your character is out of melee distance and melee attacks if you're in melee distance. Do damage to the boss, but when you see a message about spires appearing, pray melee until you get hit by the melee attack from the spires, and switch back to magic if Veraculith is out of melee distance from you, or you can resonance. Until you kill that spire, you will not be able to damage Veraculith, so kill the spire as quickly as you can. A few auto attacks later, Veraculith will spawn an egg bomb attack. The standard way to avoid this mechanic is to run to the green marker on the ground and wait until you catch the egg bomb. Once you have caught the egg bomb, run to an egg that is not of the kind that you have gotten. In this case, I have gotten a shock egg and we are right next to the poison egg already. All we have to do now is click on the poison eggs next to us and that will immediately dissipate this attack. You can return to attacking the boss after this. It's important to note that every other special attack is a spire attack, so you'll have to deal with this attack very, very, very frequently. If Ferak Lith has not done a Black Dragon dive bomb or a fireball special attack, then after the second spire attack, you'll see a Black Dragon dive bombing. In this case, the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to get dive bombed by a black dragon. All you have to do is run out of the way from where the arrow is pointing and you will not take any damage from that special attack. The next special attack is a fireball. If this fireball is about to happen, do not use any ultimate abilities like death swiftness or sunshine because the fireball will force you out of that nearby area, thus wasting your ultimate ability. When you see a fireball come slowly towards your direction, get very far away from that fireball because it will spawn a lot of fire tornadoes that do 3000 damage or more a tick, which means you're going to take a huge amount of damage if you stand anywhere near those fire tornadoes. Once you know how to deal with all the mechanics, you should eventually be able to get the kill, even if it actually takes quite a while to do so. I do not actually believe it is that important to know the ability rotation that Veraculus actually does, because every single mechanic that he does, you can react when you see it. Once you have killed Veraculus, run to the nearest chest that you passed on your way into Veraculus, and then teleport to the fourth option. If you are worried about sp the spiders from earlier, then you can teleport out and then teleport back over to ED2, go back into the dungeon again, and then teleport to the fourth option. The spiders will not appear. You want to go through the newly opened path and skip past the first two onyx dragons. Your job is to kill the next three Dragonstone Dragons and the one Onyx Dragon up there as well. When you're fighting these dragons, you should drink your super anti-fire or anti-fire to protect against their attacks. They're not going to be as strong as the Black Dragons, but they will do some damage. If you see any slow-moving crystals coming from the gemstone dragons to you, you want to step away so they don't hit you because the dragonstone dragons will reduce the remaining time on your anti-fire if they hit you with that special attack. The onyx dragons will heal if they hit you with that special attack and the hydrix dragons will take all of your adrenaline away if they hit you. 
As soon as you get past these dragons, you want to kill the two dragonstone dragons that are to the north and west of you. As soon as you kill those two dragonstone dragons, you have to run all the way south, all the way until you get past the Hydrix dragons to another couple dragonstone dragons. Kill those, and then kill the next two dragonstone dragons you get, and then once you're at the chest and have killed those dragonstone dragons, the barrier to the final boss, the Blackstone Dragon, will finally be opened. If you are good on supplies, you can actually just run up to Blackstone Dragon and start the fight immediately. However, you can teleport out and restock, and then teleport to the last option on the chest to get back to Blackstone Dragons. You will not see any of the Gemstone Dragons or any other mobs that were attacking you because they'll be either removed or returned back to their original location. The final boss, the Blackstone Dragon, will attack with all three styles and is actually very difficult to prayer switch against. If the Blackstone Dragon shoots black smokes at you, that's a magic attack. If he spins around rapidly, it's a ranged attack, and if he bites you, that's a melee attack, although it's very hard to pray melee in time to defend against a biting attack. Before the hands show up, the only special attack Blackstone Dragon will actually do is shoot slow-moving crystals at you. Move away from those because you'll take a lot of damage and get all of your adrenaline drained if they hit you. Also, Blackstone Dragon will heal. At roughly 520,000 damage, Blackstone Dragon will stop taking serious amounts of damage and will run to the center of the field and spawn four large black hands. The four black hands have a fairly short attack range, so if you do not stand between any two black hands, you're only going to get hit by one at a time. Whenever they slam the ground, they're going to shoot a slow-moving black cloud at you that is a magic projectile that will do 3,000 magic damage without prayer. Roughly the same time you get hit by the magic attack, the hand will shoot out smaller hands that will do roughly 3,000 damage a tick. It's important that you move away and do not allow these hands to hit you. They'll move relatively slowly and only in a straight line, so you should be easily able to avoid them. To deal with each hand, you can pray soul split mainly, but when you see the black cloud coming close to your character, pray magic to take the black cloud hit and then pray soul split again. And then move a few squares to the side to avoid getting hit by the small hands. You can do this for all four hands. However, there are also a few spots on the area that are completely safe from any hands and are within attack range, as long as you have either a two-handed ranged weapon or are using magic to attack the hands. If you stand at any of the four diamond shapes that the arrows are pointing at, and you stand at either the tip or one square out from the center, then the small hands will never actually be able to hit your character, but you will be facing two magic auto attacks if you have not killed one of the hands next to you. This is normally a strategy used if you're planning on trying to kill the boss a little faster and you don't want to move around as much. Once the hands die, you can continue attacking the boss. When the Blackstone Dragon stops attacking you, and heals a small amount, he's going to spawn a spiral fire coming outwards and eventually into Blackstone Dragon itself. You should stay relatively close to the boss when this happens and then step out a little bit if you need, if you believe that the fire is about to hit you. The fire doesn't move super fast, so if you see the fire looks like it might be close, you can step out or in a little bit to make sure it doesn't hit you and then keep attacking the boss. During the time the spiral fire happens, you will not get auto attacked, so you can soul split to heal up and do as much damage as you can. If the Blackstone Dragon faces towards a specific direction that is not at you, stops attacking you, and then shoots a black ball out, 
you want to step away from that black ball. The black ball will reach its destination and then explode into a whole bunch of smaller fiery black balls that will do around 3000 magic damage to your character. If you're praying magic and use devotion, this attack will actually not do any damage to you, but I highly recommend not being close to it because these shadow black fire things can do quite a lot of damage to your character if you're not careful. During the time Blackstone Dragon is doing this attack before the black ball actually explodes, you can soul split up if you want, although you don't have a ton of time to do this. Don't forget about the slow moving spike attack that can also happen on this phase. When Blackstone Dragon gets to 260,000 or less health, and after it finishes a spiral fire attack if it has already started one, the Blackstone Dragon will then jump in the air and try to spawn fire randomly from where it last landed. You can attack the boss here and pray soul split to heal up and build adrenaline, but you will not actually be able to do any damage during this time. Your number one priority during this time is to not get hit by the fire. If Blackstone Dragon is in a convenient location to actually attack with Soul Split to heal up, then go for it, but this should not be a priority, and I've seen many people get in trouble trying to do this too much. Eventually, Blackstone Dragon stops jumping around and will start becoming attackable, and will also start with a Spiral Fire. Make sure that you are not going to get hit by fire before you start attacking the boss again. You're going to have the same mechanics that you dealt with earlier, with the Spiral Fire and a Shadow Bombs that will create a bunch of shadowy fire stuff, and the slow moving crystal attack. Eventually though, you'll get the boss's HP down to zero, and you'll have completed the dungeon. Congratulations, that is actually your first ever solo ED2 run, or if you've already done this before, this will be another completed run. Now that we've finished explaining how to actually fight your way through the dungeon, let's explain the actual loot and rewards you get from this dungeon. The common loot I estimate is worth roughly 2 million on average. You're going to get the majority of this from the draconic energy you get from killing Blackstone Dragon and the onyx studs you get from killing the other bosses. In addition, you're occasionally going to get onyxes from the gemstone dragons and or the bosses. The real drops you're looking for though are the Greater Barge Codex, the Greater Fury Codex, and the Greater Flurry Codex. The Greater Flurry Codex has a 1 in 100 drop rate every time you kill Astalarn. The Greater Fury Codex has a 1 in 100 drop rate every time you kill Brack Lith and the Greater Barge Codex is a 1 in 100 every time you kill Blackstone Dragon, but this is a solo drop rate. These drop rates get substantially worse if you do duo or trio runs, but they still happen. Often in a duo or trio run, chances are your team will probably split the drop evenly among the team members in order for everyone to get a piece of the drop. There is also a pet name, BizD, which has a 1 in 300 drop rate in solo, but a 1 in 1000 drop rate in duo, and a 1 in 1500 drop rate in trio. If you get to 20% of the drop rate in any of these three methods, you actually have a improved drop chance of getting the pet. After you get the pet, you're going to want to actually go through an ED3 run later on in some way so you can use the inert blackstone crystal on Siriu once you finish your ED3 run, and that will unlock the BizD pet. I unfortunately do not have the BizD pet and have never managed to get the inert blackstone crystal drop, so I do not have footage that I can actually show you of getting the pet at ED3. Thank you all for watching the video.
If you learned anything or enjoyed the video, please like the video, comment down below anything you thought of, any concerns, any questions, or any general comments you wanted to make, and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out my Twitch in the link in the description down below.